health care reform passed and Cornell Wenske Ball's Sweet 16 on the same day. The odds were against them happening in the same millennium. A special comment on politics in the wake of the passage in a moment. But first, do you realize how unlikely this basketball thing really is? I mean, look, Cornell doesn't even have its own ball. They practice with rolled up tape. Uh, not really, but it might as well be true. The last Cornell alum to retire from the National Basketball Association did so in 1951. The last Cornell victory in March Madness before this one, the NCAA tournament, was never. Then on Friday, they upended the 12th ranked team in the country, Temple. Yesterday, they led Wisconsin 11 to 1, and then they got better. Cornell won by 18, led by 26 points from Lewis Dale. We got eight seniors on this team, and we want to take this ride as long as we can because after this, it's just nothing but babies and memories. So we want to just keep going. Print up those T-shirts now, nothing but babies and memories. To advance further, Cornell, which does not give out athletic scholarships, now only has to beat the top-ranked team left in the tournament, Kentucky, on Thursday night. Maybe not. But until then, we own this tournament. And that, judged by the history of Cornell basketball, that is impossible. 33 seasons ago, a friend of mine named Pat Lyons opened up the public address microphone at the Cornell gym and absentmindedly announced, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Cornell Big Red Hockey. He laughed, the Hoops fans laughed, he corrected himself. I'm sorry, good evening, and welcome to Cornell Big Red Basketball, whereupon the basketball crowd booed. And this was in the middle of possibly the worst sequence of coaches in college basketball history. The ways the stories were told to me, it was the first guy who stranded the team on a road trip because he supposedly spent all the money on hookers. He was replaced by the coach who then supposedly cut all the non-whites from the team. His successor claimed the refs were racist, and that's why they called all the fouls on his team. They replaced him with the coach who supposedly screamed at his team at halftime of some tournament and didn't realize the wall to the locker room was only a curtain separating it from the media center. So when he shoved one of the players, the guy went right flying through the curtain and onto the media snack table. And now, till Thursday anyway, we own this tournament.